a roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms, Danny at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are on the fly with another guest. Ben Kaufman is in the house. Shout out, Ben. What's up? Ben, you know what's so crazy is? Well, one, you just came to pick up your order, and we threw you on the podcast, so that's <laughs> fucking awesome. But two, you just opened your first gym. Right. How old are you? I'll be 25 in two weeks. That's awesome. And it's been open for two days. That's right. So this is the best <laughs> time to podcast. Yep. Yeah. So there's so many people that listen to the show that are in, I really believe, in that exact position. Yeah early 20s early 30s want to have their own joint they're in a place they're you know they and that is where it either you do what you just did mm. or they stay in that situation what was contributing factor that made you want to make the jump um what are you most nervous about most excited about and kind of just give us a little background on, on this this whole thing that just happened bro um so yeah um a contributing factor is just the fact of like the main thing starting with personal training, like, I mean, I've been following you for six, seven years now, mm -hmm. and it's like, everybody's kind of got the same question that's in this field. Like, I see trainers all the time, like, what do I got to do next year? Like, how do I have the life that when you started, like, your own first studio and stuff? Mm -hmm. But, like, really, um, actually I made a post about it today, like, the belief aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, big contributing thing has just been the fact that I believe I can change lives. I can believe I you know, can help people and whatnot. And fortunately enough, the gym that I was at, I didn't have to, um, like any of my clients didn't have to pay a membership. Got it. So you had kind of a unique situation. I was, yeah, I was independent <coughs> and, um, as were they. So if they're with me, they're with me. Got it. Um, if they want to get a membership, they can, but that was a, a fortunate part that I was able to build up my clientele, uh, build relationships and ultimately build such a rapport with my people that when I first started like introducing the idea, like started buying my stuff like years ago, like I'm, I was built and I told you on the phone, yeah. like I've been planning something out and, um, been executing kid, been executing. So just basically over this period of time, like, you know, kind of putting stuff in their ears and how I set up the exercises with how the gym was at the old gym. Like, Hey, if I get my own spot, like you're cool to leave. And everybody, when it comes down to it, when they're with you and they rock with you, they're yeah. going to come with you. Uh, there wasn't any hesitation from anybody where it's like, uh, I got to stay here, got to do this. Like, Every people, Everybody left. Everybody. Um, Love that. So, for instance, like Aaron, who was on the last one, he's one of the OGs. He came with me a year and a half ago, reached out, and he's been rocking with me since. But he's in the same situation. When you ride with somebody and you believe in what they're doing, what you're mm -hmm. building, and I believe I'm trying to build something great, um, they're going to follow that. So you got to be genuine. Gotta if be it's real. real. Yeah, 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 of so course. So that's what I'm saying. If it's, if it's genuine, it's real, and, you know, you're actually about what you say and what you do, then people are going to buy into that. I think that's and called actual confidence about your situation. Yeah. Go ahead, Cole. What was the, I guess, like the starting point of, like, what was your whole situation like whenever you got, like, your first client and how that evolved to where now you have enough clientele to go at yeah. it all the time? Um, so <laughs> kind of funny story. I... Technically, when I first started training, I had just got my personal training certification, whatever, um, and I was deployed to Cuba for a year. Mm. Uh, during that time, I started, like, putting it out, like, hey, I'm open to help people. I started helping everybody in my military unit, like, constantly. Practicing with your homies. Yeah, it kind of became, like... I used still, to practice on all Rachel's friends. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> training. <laughs> okay. Hey, sorry, oh, man. Yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> Humble so brag. Yeah. It kind of became a situation where, like... <laughs> You know, everybody's, like, you're the fitness guy. You're the yeah, one. Yeah, you, you know, become that guy. Are, yeah. Um, so really, when it first, sorry, what was your question again? My bad. I just like, first like, client. Yeah, what was oh, your first client? Yeah, yeah first my client. bad. Uh, so then I got home, um, was seeked out by the gym owner, and he had asked, like, hey, are you interested in coming here? We're going to start this up. And it was private at first. It wasn't, like, a, a gym membership. So it was just it was whatever spot. I knew, and this goes back to, like, the entry point, like, when I was going to start, like, doing what I wanted to do and what I was passionate about, I'm just going to be annoying shit with – started on Facebook. Like, I'm going to post as much as I can. I was putting, like, my timelines of what I had available through the day, which it was nonstop. Like, I was open. Like, Yeah. I, You're like, there's still I, seven I, spots yes, available. Exactly. So I was kind of <laughs> – But, I was, hey, fuck it. I was setting up my schedule to a point where, like, it kind of seemed like 
hey, I was getting busier, getting busier. Not a fake thing, but yeah. I was placing my timelines around where I figured people would come. Like, hey, I got morning spots. I got an afternoon spot for, you know, the person if you want to come at lunch. I got 5, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. I was training until 9 p.m. some nights to get, um, like, high school or any, like, younger kids in that had school all day. So, like, the first entry point of the client was, like, I'm just going to do whatever I can to get – as many people as possible to know that I'm willing to do whatever and be flexible. That's, that's the same thing I say now, even with a kid and everything, like I pride myself on being, and I know you have to have a certain point, like where you're, um, you know, not, not too flexible, but at the same time, like I pride myself on being as flexible as I can be to maintain and we well, um, have to bend work or, yes, in the beginning, bro. Exactly. I mean, you're trying to build something. You can't yeah. just do it on your own terms. Yeah. You're on a lot of other people's terms. Right. And it is that. And I, I truly enjoy though, just that first client mentality, like seeking these people out, like almost getting to the point where, you know, you're kind of becoming annoying with your post and you know, it's one person asking for shares, doing whatever you can, like put yourself out there. Like at the end of the day, Nobody's really going to hate on you for, you know, doing that. If they do, like, what Welcome. are they doing? Like, you're the one putting yourself out there and being real about it. And I keep doing that, like, even at a point with my schedule where I want a certain type of, you know, person that wants to be serious and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But in the same vein, like, I'm willing to continue to put myself out there and do whatever I have to do to keep helping as many people as I can. I mean, so. you really started it off with the first thing. You believe you could change lives. Yeah. And when you do personal training and you actually generally want to help people, people yeah. can feel that pretty. Right. And the fact that you'll go out of your way. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Danny. Did you know, uh, was it like at the first uh, client point, did you know that you wanted to like open your own spot? Or did that happen at a particular point in time? A uh, particular point in time was my first uh, garage gym at my parents. I actually... Before, like I said, before I had gotten deployed, um, I had built this, like, out of my dad's, like, little garage. I'm like, shit, I could probably start training people out of here. And this is prior to me even, like, being certified or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I already had the vision of what I had, like, built and what I was building. Like, I can do this. And then it was like, okay, do I stay in Zanesville? Do I move? Do I do this? Do I th do that? And then the deployment happened. Started training people. I'm like, Oh shit! I'm gonna I'm gonna go home and build my own thing. Like I said, I got seeked out, um, started training at the gym, and then gradually at that point, like you know, every week that goes by, when you know you're paying rent and whatnot, you're like eats at you a little bit. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I I think I can do this. Like, and that's just been my belief system since. Like, and it's been super cool, but. Um, so, like, I leading into knew. that right away is, like, the, the strategy portion of it. Like, what did your strategy kind of look like? Because, like, you knew that you were going – it was uh, obviously going that so way. So, I – we had talked on the phone about a month ago, and I had told him, like, I've just been building up – and the equipment I have is, like, nice and stuff, but just even my own garage gym. You've like, been stacking I've his been, stuff for a bit, Yeah, bro. so, like, yeah. anything I Smart. could do, <laughs> like, because prices are crazy anyway, but, like, even Facebook Marketplace, like – my strategy was find the best stuff that I could and to go with that on the strategy like like I said with the gym mm -hmm. I started to get to a point with the exercise selection what I would do like I was envisioning okay if I have a space this size what am I going to have that I can kind of mimic that they're what they're doing and then get them away from some of the stuff that's at the gym like so smart yep. rowers skiers like mm -hmm. I knew initially like I don't, I don't want to really, really want to drop that much like if I can get outside, farmer carries, sled drags, lunges, like, all right, there's a grand. You there's start, two grand you that I can save. You start pushing the programming towards yeah, what you yeah. know it's about yes. to happen. and yeah. the programming always Smart. goes back to, like, I mean, it's Jim Pop I'm working with, but in the same vein, like, they're doing some of the shit I'm doing. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's programmed through my stuff, but in the same vein, like, I've learned so much of that through you. Like, hmm. But that was a strategy. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, build, build, build. And I like having my own stuff anyway, and I train how all you guys train, so – um, I mean, straight up, Ben, you would work out with us if you had yeah, the time. Yeah. I've invited him multiple times. <laughs> you never yeah. even—I don't even think you've trained here yet. Not, not no. here. No. But I so he's got clients at that time. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but well, he's a 65, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I've been trying to get him up here because he's about it. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too because like getting away from the high ticket items because mm -hmm. they're probably really used to those things too. Yeah. So you're exposing them to a whole new world of things. Well, it's kind of funny with like 
Okay, so like a rower, a skier, mm -hmm. um, like a echo bike, bike mm -hmm. and then there's like a like a true like a treadmill, like one of those self-propelled things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super the pricey, air, air like runners. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like even when they come in one day and they're like, I'm like, hey, we're gonna go outside and do farmer carries for you know our three to five minutes, something like that, or today we're gonna lunge, like stretch a little bit. They're more, <laughs> they're happier doing that than just sitting on a rower and like yeah. getting a look, like, hey, we're going to warm up today. Like, okay, let's do something else. So I try to um, pride myself on change around like what they do each time they come in from mm -hmm. like the warm up standpoint. But nah, you don't need any of that stuff right away. Like, yeah. They don't care. It's so. amazing what you get by with. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Trevor. Okay. So I'm curious, like when kind of like this whole like journey like started for you, like whether it's like weightlifting, like kind of like when you got into like weightlifting, what made you start, what started you into it and all that kind of stuff like that? Um, well, honestly, uh, my, f I graduated from high school in 16. I never really like cared about the lifting aspect. I mean, I did, but like, it was kind of like, okay, cool. I'll, you know, I'll get this workout in, whatever. Because I got to. Yeah, yeah. But, there, but there was a time we held a powerlifting meet, like, each year. And that was super fun because, like, I remember my parents, like, would come up and, like, record me. And then I'd take the pictures. Like, it was just cool seeing yourself, like, make progress. But really it started uh, ticking for me was my freshman year of college. I went to Ohio Dominican for a year. Actually, it was a semester. Uh, went for football. I hated football. Like, even out of high school, like, I'm like, do I want to do this? Like, my boys were going. It was like, uh, I don't know. But the one aspect I loved was the early morning workouts. We had a strength coach. I think his name was Coach Gresh. That was what he was called. But his programming was cool. Like, the way this is enthusiasm. Like, everything about lifting, like, pre-workout. Like, I don't know. I just love the aspect of it. So I started waking up early. Uh, that was when I kind of found, like, your stuff. And I was listening to, like, Greg Plitt and stuff back yeah, then. Yeah, and, like, Shout out Greg. He had YouTube videos that I would just, like, wake up in the morning and listen to. Like, well, and he's started, a military guy, too. Yeah. Yep. So I started listening to all that. And this is prior military. Like, I didn't know at this point, like, really anything. And I um, was going to school for criminal justice. Figured I can really only see myself as, like, law enforcement. I don't know. It was weird. Uh, long story short, I left ODU, started, like, love and lifting, found Corey stuff, looked into Columbus State, and uh, I was already involved in, like, criminal justice program and whatnot, so I didn't want to, like, reset all my yeah. credits or whatever. So I finished out at a local community college for criminal justice, but every time that we had, like, presentations or, like, why do you want to be in law enforcement, this and that, like, I always wanted to be, like, um, it, it comes to back to making a difference, but I always wanted to be the person of helping others for fitness like i thought it'd be cool to get in a law enforcement unit and be like the Donk. freaking fit cop or like <laughs> yeah. the chain i would write papers about like changing the status quo of like you know all the stuff that was happening in the world but in the same time like coffee and donuts and just it always reverted back to like fitness side of things and i was already it doing was it. like through criminal justice yeah, to fitness when reality <laughs> is it's really fitness yeah, yeah. yeah that makes so, sense. it kept telling and you my that professors kept like you know kind of saying like Every paper you do is about yeah, lifting. So weird. It, it was weird. I mean, I ended up, <laughs> yeah, I ended up finishing the program, but I knew just before, like, prior to that deployment, because that started coming up, like, I'm going to get this cert. I'm going to start training. Like, I'm going to see how many people I can train during the deployment. I'm going to see how many people I can get online. And it was, like, instant. Like, right when that met and I passed that, like, exam that I guess matters, but it really doesn't, like, that meant, like, everything to me. Oh, so yeah. I was like holy shit, like, I can start helping people, like, they're going to believe in me, they're going to see, like, I'm certified, like, all this stuff that really I could have done, like, forever ago, it just kind of took a couple things for me to find my path mm -hmm. to end of that. Um, he says forever ago, he's 25 with the gym. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, I get it, though. Did I answer your question with yeah. kind of how that, yeah. yeah. So that, that whole transition with college and figuring out my way and mm -hmm. um, doing that, and then actually um, – I did end up reaching out to Don Labenthal. I literally yeah. have a math class Shout left out. that I like every semester. That I'm like, I just like I don't, I don't feel like doing this. I don't know. It's weird, but we've had yeah. plenty of talks about that. Don's being, fucking you know. awesome. Yeah, and he's so, yoked. So and he's super yoked he's now. Technically, no, I do <laughs> not. That and mark. I don't have you know, the degrees and stuff. Just yeah. stuff you talk about. For sure. But um, I did get a Westside certification, my A stuff. Oh, so, yeah. oh, and yeah. then 
Aaron always jokes around about being like a certified G. So yeah, said, well, <laughs> hey, should have we like should have a fucking certification yeah. that you get through here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's kind of how that that all went down. Gold chain required. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> absolutely. I need a gold chain sponsor. Yeah, that's Jesus. exactly. Yeah, who's, who's your go-to? Well, that Jackson co- that Jackson company they sponsor people. That's who I need to go with. They yeah. they spa- uh, sponsor up, Mac McClug. Yeah, I need to holler at him and Odell. I got you should send, send him a oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> send him a portfolio of you dunking with the chain on. Yeah, dunking on Treadway with the dunking chain. Dunking on Treadway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so God. good. Ben, what? Uh, you just had a baby. Mm-hmm. You, uh, mm-hmm. your wife also works within the facility, right? Yes. So you got a combo facility, which this is also part of the good strategy. So mm-hmm. kind of explain that real quick. Uh, so, yeah, back to the deployment. We met on the deployment. Oh, okay, uh, I didn't know that. I had never talked to her prior, and she'll like listen to this if I. Yeah. Um, Shout out. Speak wisely. I had, yeah, I had never <laughs> talked to her. Like, I got in my military unit, and I was kind of like the the dude over in the corner. Like, I don't know. I don't. I'm not a super like outgoing. Like, I don't really care to make conversation with people. I don't care about yeah, making conversation with. But I, I don't know if that sounds like. <laughs> it probably sounds pretty bad, but like, actually, Trey, I feel like that's Trey's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Trey's like, oh no, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's well. So I always say like. When Trey's really your friend, like you know, like he's really your friend because he's yeah. not going to be a fake friend. Right. So you just so, got the same skill. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we kind of get there, and I don't know if I should be saying any of this because technically, like, the stuff's frowned upon, but yeah. Uh, get there. And it's like, <laughs> Here we go. It's like Cuba. So, yeah. you know, all things go in Cuba, yeah, I think. Well, yeah. We get there, and it's like, I'm telling my, like, roommates and stuff because you live in, like, a uh, like a house pretty much. Yeah. It's just guys. And, I don't know if it's just the thing about, like, the Cuba deployment, but it's, like, the drinking. Like, you can drink. It's one of the only ones that you can drink, and, like, the girls are there. I don't know. You can wild out a little bit. There's beaches and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. You definitely know. It's like you're you're in Miami, but you're not. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) Close, not far Yeah, I know, right? Um, But then, like, her, I was just like, all right. I know I keep saying this. Like, I'm not going to, like, talk to anybody and everything, but, uh we were at the beach one day. I walked up to her and, like, playing pass with the old, like, hey, throw a football that way type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one works. And, hey, and uh, so, girl. Sure enough. <laughs> yeah, what up? Yeah. What like, up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure enough. Yeah, sh- sure enough, that same day, uh, somehow, some way, we just started, like, talking. And uh, then from that point, like, we were on the same work shift and stuff. So we technically started dating in Cuba, uh, got back home. Uh, she's she's from Cincinnati originally, and uh, she was in in school to be a statistician, yep. which is what she does now. Um, during that time, she was coming back and forth to Zanesville. Long story short, um, she found out she was pregnant, and so I had already kind of established the personal training stuff. Sure. So we agreed. She you know she would just move to Zanesville, and a house kind of fell in our lap um, per se. So. That kind of happened and transpired, and then, I, like I said, I was already working at this building, and downtowns, or not downtown, the first floor is like a membership gym, second floor is um, yoga, like wellness, massages, stuff like that, Yeah. and then third floor is like another little top floor, but um, I thought it'd be pretty cool, because I started telling her forever ago, I'm like, hey, if we ever get our own spot, like, or I ever get my own spot, like, I want there to be a space for her. Sure. There was a room that came available, and I had asked the owners, I'm like, hey, she's about to finish school for this. Can she get in here? And I know she doesn't know a lot of people, but I feel like she can be a good, it's a good room for her. Worked out pretty great. Um, It's a little bit different for her because she doesn't know anybody from like. Because you're from this area. Yeah, I'm from these areas. So I know these people and everything, but. But you guys are building businesses simultaneously in the same joint. And and it's all like. Smart, smart strategy. Exactly. So looking back on everything, it's cool because there was like a building period of like. Of course. Hey, I'm doing this. You're about to do this. Eventual point, we can do this. Um, but she started doing really well. Um, I've helped her with, well, she's done great now, but, like, the marketing stuff. Because just from not knowing anybody, so I'm constantly trying to share out, like, hey, this is my fiance. Like, you know, hit her up. Like, girls, like, you know, your waxes, your facials, massages. And even my clients during sessions, I started learning stuff from Steph where it's, like, if they ask about some type of service or product, like, I want to be able to talk about it. Yeah. So sometimes I would get her clients just right out the gate. I'm like, hey, you need to see her. Like, Or if they're eating a certain way and they're seeing her already, I'm like, yeah. hey, if you tell her that, that's going to mess with your skin. Like, 
So kind of we're going hand in hand with. No, I see the vision, yeah, bro. Yeah, so cool. somebody needs a massage, like, boom, hit her up. Uh, Danny gets taint waxes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Twice weekly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's called a. Uh, Says the guy what, who's what, been what, shaved what, multiple what, times what, from his wife. What, what's, what's it called? Yeah. A Brazilian. Oh. A Brazilian. oh. Yeah. Speak that Portuguese, yeah. kid. Yeah. She's not. <laughs> I, she's not had any men yet. Oh, no, no. this is the first yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can uh, we can we clip this one, Kyle? <laughs> Does Rachel spread your cheeks? <laughs> oh, he's yeah. trying. Yeah. Trying. You're trying. <laughs> you're, right. you're trying. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben. No, it's all good. Um. So yeah, we were down there for. Um, uh, I was almost there for two years. She was there for about a year. Um. But yeah, she built her business up. Her clientele's up. So, same thing with the personal training. Like. You don't have to be a part of the building to, you know, see any of us. Like whoever's business plan that was wasn't real smart. Well, not it, hating on it, but no, I mean, yeah. like, I would never it, do it, it that way. It helped us out. Oh, it's it's for you. Lot. It was There's fucking so much amazing. From like a, a standpoint on like, we don't really have a foothold. Yeah, that, that was like immediately I knew. So. Yeah, bro. That 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 was the same kind of thing with me. Like my first situation, uh, they were members of the tennis club. But I had no non-compete. Yeah. So when I was ready to dip, I knew. Yeah, we didn't. I, 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 there was no problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, it was like that was their oversight. Yeah. And they didn't think at 21 and probably same as you being 25, like, that you would make that jump. Right. Because most people don't think that way. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, motherfucker, I ain't paying you 30%. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. that's pretty sick. So now you're building both businesses together. Yeah. Location's open. Yep. Looks great. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it seems so like it's going well already so far. Yeah, we're right on a main strip of, like, Zanesville's kind of weird because it's, like, big but small at the same time. So, like, a lot of people know each other. It's a lot of word of mouth in mm-hmm. Zanesville. And the location that we're at, like, it's the busiest place that you can be around. Like Perfect. Um, and for her, it's going to be even bigger because I can, I can only take on so many people. But she sees p- most of her people, like, once a month. So, Got like... It. She can see somebody every day, brand new, multiple times. To- like, so That's she crazy. has the potential to um, really grow a lot, which I'm super excited for her for. Sure. And then I'm just kind of on the back end with my, you know, OG people and anybody who wants to come along. And like, I just had a nine-year-old start the other night. That's and pretty cool. So. Well, and you're going to continue. You're going to be obviously the premier guy there if you're not already. And it's like you should really lock up with Matheny because mm. Matheny's yep. done a great job of as he scaled – scaled the price scaled yeah. the time and he's built a really really successful Definitely. business following similar yeah. path so i think you guys have yeah, a lot we in had, common we had a phone call sometime last year because i really want to get into uh the online space of things for sure it's just setting everything up like um you know platform to use like you know pricing and everything like yep. that so we've talked a couple times but i need to get uh with him for sure and start figuring that out because i have people all the time like you know, help me in between, or, you yeah. know, I'm not from Zane's, like, so I, I definitely can add that. You just got to have the menu of services all over yes, the place. Yeah. Uh, where can everybody find you at, Ben? Uh, underscore B Kaufman on Instagram. Uh, don't have Twitter. I'm going to be getting on TikTok soon. I actually Shit, let's ride. Dude, yeah. get on there. Yeah. Um, Actually, I follow a bunch of cool stuff. The helmet stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. My, all right, so his, my his number TikTok's my crazy. number one thing with TikTok is is that you first off you have to use TikTok and understand yeah. what the fuck people want to see. I agree. Right. And you'll notice that the guys who are really fucking killing on TikTok, they'll find like one yeah. way they do things, yeah. and then they'll just fucking keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah I'm sure so I'm once you find like find the groove, it's like all right, this is easy. It's good. People kind of fuck with it. You just just keep rolling. Well, yeah. I got like twenty thousand followers being like a hot dad, <laughs> and I need to like get the next twenty thousand people not that way. I'm trying to do fitness because I looked at my fucking my You're analytics. A I am a little whore. Yeah. Thirst trapper, you know, Danny. Thirst trapper. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, I looked at my demo. It's seventy three percent women, and but I think they're like maybe under 20 years old so i need to do a better job of who i'm attracting <laughs> on tiktok <laughs> Jeez. so cole's advice is good i just yeah. need to find a different strategy Danny, what's that shit on silicon valley like where all their users are like underage <laughs> oh uh, yeah that was terrible i love that show by they the had way no, dude, it's fucking so good right? it's, it's so a good show. yeah it is a great it's show. So underrated. Shout it out. It is underrated. Yeah. All right, Ben, it was awesome having you on. Appreciate you it. You didn't know you were going to be on today, which yeah. is epic. Yeah. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's Small Arms Danny. 
This is at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Ben Coffin, appreciate you, bro. Yep. We out. Thank you.